Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Investor Expo show for April 16th. My name is Anna, and I'll be your host today. We are having a great lineup of three speakers for you. Matthew Buckley, Eric Gebhardt, and David Morgan. Uh, all right, folks, let's go ahead. Uh, let's get airborne. I just left a... Uh... A weekly debrief with uh, all my members, and uh, we had a we had a great session. We're having a really good week, um, and it's that's it's it's kind of bittersweet to say uh, because this morning at 8:30, another six, you know, five million, six million uh, Americans are out of work. Uh, we're in we're in the low 20 million of people in this country. They're out of work. Uh, I, I, I say this tongue in cheek, but I, I kind of mean it. I wear two, two suits here at Topkin Options, uh, a flight suit. So I'll tell you how I feel as an American, as a patriot. And then, uh, a, and, you know, an Armani $10,000 Gordon Gecko suit. At the end of the day, folks, capitalism died last Thursday morning. Last Thursday morning, uh, we got the weekly unemployment claims. They were 6 million, 6.2 million. And within 0 0.03 seconds of that data coming out, the Federal Reserve jumped in and said, you know what, you know, they essentially, it was like the Pope coming out and saying hell doesn't exist. Uh, that's when capitalism died, folks. So good morning. Uh, let's go ahead and get airborne. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about what's happening. I'm going to give you kind of an up-to-date intelligence brief uh, with what's going on uh, around the world here in the United States and then what we can do to uh, kind of execute tactically to potentially um uh, make some money here uh yeah absolutely we just uh i just left a weekly options brief where uh we got more bullish on fxi uh, even more uh fxi is the china etf and we'll talk about that uh, as well but folks uh, who am i uh, well i'm the guy that nailed this to the day on 22 january ladies and gentlemen i was in an accelerated retirement brief 22 january is right there donald trump looked into the camera sitting over in Davos, CNBC interview and said, why are you even asking me about coronavirus? It's a joke. It's my good friend G's on it. I believe him. I believe the numbers. And, uh, you know, boom. I said, you know what? We're getting the cash. We're getting long volatility and we're buying puts on the S&P 500. Smash. Then what happened? Right here, I nailed it within two days that. That was the easiest money ever made on God's green earth. Now it's been, you know, it, it's we are trading in a in a uh, in a dollar uh, in 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 a range here, and we're going to talk about that stuff. All right, this is kind of the big one, uh, or, or that was what what I just showed you on the screen was the Fred Sanford. That was the big one, folks. That that was it. Are we going to have another one, another leg down? In my opinion, a, a, up until last thursday morning the answer was yeah we're going back down to the march lows we're going to retest 2000 we're going to blah 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 those days are over we are not going to do that real quick in a month one month we made millionaires here at topkin options our weekly options these were a hundred thousand dollar model portfolios starting january 1st 409 grand in the weekly options portfolio, our solo Amazon service, uh, which we just trade Amazon, hence the name, 136 grand. Our primary portfolio, $490,000. You ready for this? Accelerated, this was our most conservative portfolio, almost a million bucks. Weekly debrief, we do every Thursday, 150 grand. Wow. You add all that together, it was about $2.1 million in a month. Little old ladies in tennis shoes, man. We got everybody here. We got retirees, fighter pilots, airline guys, uh, stay-at-home moms, you name it. Printed money. We have all of our trades documented and everything. All right, so sit up, pay attention, uh, silence that electronic nicotine, uh, and here's my promise to you in the next uh, 40 minutes. Give you an up-to-date intelligence brief. T try and teach you as quick as I can how to employ options uh, and show you what we're targeting, at least uh, for max profit, and uh, how to turn panic into profit, folks. While other people panicked 
while their 401ks went to zero one ks we printed money. A lot of people learned the hard way that for every buyer, there's a seller. For all of you who jumped into the market October through December, there was a dude like me standing there whispering, this is going to end and it's going to end awfully. And we were right. My name is Matthew Buckley. My call sign is Wiz, ladies and gentlemen. I flew the FA-18 Hornet for the United States Navy for about 15 years. Graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School, uh, which many of you know is Top Gun, uh, the adversary program, and uh, did some uh, flew some combat sorties uh, over Iraq. Uh, what's that have to do with trading? Everything. Folks, you don't join the Navy to get rich, man. You join the Navy to serve your country. Uh, but I was always interested in finance. You know, growing up, looking at the you know, my dad sitting there at the table at breakfast uh, and I'd be looking at the back page and wow, what are those little stock symbols? And, but dad explained, you know, Matthew, if you uh, if you own shares at McDonald's, you know, and you go and buy a Happy Meal today, mom takes you to go get a Happy Meal. You could make money on those shares. So I was always interested in finance. So as I was learning how to fly and fight uh, the F-18 Hornet in the Navy, I applied everything that I was learning flying a fighter jet to trading, having a strategy, implementing tactics, having a checklist, not being emotional, contingency planning, asking what if something goes wrong, what am I going to do? And I applied it to my trading with incredible results. I eventually popped up on the radar of one of the largest uh, volatility arbitrage equity options trading firms in the country, headquartered right there in the beautiful Chicago Board of Trade, the CBOT. Right there was our trading firm. Big, beautiful windows, uh, loved, loved it, absolutely had a blast. Helped build a hedge fund when I was there. I helped build the retail brokerage uh, that was Options House, that is E-Trade now. Um, and I gotta, I'll be honest with you, I, I felt like Eddie Murphy in trading places. But at the end of the day, folks, to be brutally honest with you, the smart money ain't that smart. How many of you saw in February, like Ray Dalios, the biggest hedge fund manager in the world, Cash is trash. That was February, folks. In February, I was warning Top Gun Options members that they were burning bodies in Wuhan. I was showing you videos of a dude on his scooter going to each hospital in Wuhan and showing videos before they all got taken down. So it was the world's smartest money, Leon Cooperman, all these guys. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about this. As they were all saying that, I was saying the exact opposite. So... I was the managing director of strategy for this firm, and I also was the founder and CEO of the Options News Network. Kind of what I'm doing right now, man, giving you a behind the scenes look at the options world and what's going on and uh, and helping you to potentially profit. That's my squadron when I left uh, Chicago. Uh, this kid on the right is uh, 19 years old. He used to go to Norwich University in Vermont in the Corps of Cadets, wants to fly for the Marine Corps, but now he's taking all his classes virtually, which sucks. Jack wants to go to the Naval Academy. Keely Grace is 12, and she's not allowed to leave the house. So that's me. That's my squadron. That's how I got to where I am uh, and uh, Top Gun Options. Okay, so what I want to do is actually – and like I said, this is – so I, 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 I wore a flight suit. I'll tell you how I feel as an American. Um, but I'm also – this is how we make money is thinking like that guy. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, the Dow being down 14 points when 5.3 million Americans reported unemployed today is insane. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Markets are forward looking. What are markets doing right now? Markets, folks, are ignoring the present. They're, ignore, they're looking past all this noise right here, and they are flying out into the future and saying, you know what? We're going to get past this. First of all, as an American, I'm going to tell you that's the truth. The president, for his some of his initial missteps, he has to do this. Mawa. Make America work again. Period. It's too late to lock down, folks. It's too late to contain. At the end of the day, and this is going to sound brutal, well, actually, no, it isn't because it's the truth. You ready for this shocking news? People die. I'm not going to make it out of here alive. My dad used to say that. He's like, Matt, and uh, he didn't make it out alive. So, folks, at the end of the day, we can't let the what's happening to us right now destroy us even more. Folks, China is an absolute disgrace. 
what are they doing now? Uh, they're lighting off nukes. They're testing nuclear weapons in violation of international treaties. They released this. Did they deliberately release it? Eh. They absolutely were experimenting this with the level four. The only level four lab in China is in Wuhan. It absolutely left that lab to the wet market. We know that for a fact. I told you this two months ago. Last night, when I saw the president's press conference, I stood up and said, damn right. Finally, it's out of his mouth that, you know what? We're, yeah, we really are taking a look at that. He knew two months ago what it was. He wasn't going to piss off Xi, though. At the time, uh, uh, you know, folks, Donald Trump back here just beat an impeachment, a fake impeachment, three years of Russia hoax, stock market at record highs, unemployment at record lows. You just beat China into submission for a phase one trade deal. Of course, you're going to be on cloud nine. So when somebody hits you with the, hey, dude, this is this is going on and this could be bad. Can you fault the guy? My point being is China, folks, is a mortal enemy of the United States. I have buddies in alphabet agencies right now that are worried about China actually coming in and buying our companies. They can't buy Boeing or Raytheon or stuff like that. They're national security issues. But there is absolutely nothing preventing China from coming in and buying Disney tomorrow because it's it's getting the hell beat out of it. It's stock. You guys know about the USS Theodore Roosevelt. I know Chopper. I know Admiral <laughs> Studa Baker. Studa was a top, was one of my Top Gun instructors. I flew with Studa in Lemoore. Studa is the commander, Carrier Strike Group 9. I know everything that's going on on the Roosevelt. What happened yesterday? A Chinese aircraft carrier sailing right through the Strait of Taiwan, where the Roosevelt's supposed to be. So China has put us on our ass economically. They've put us on our ass militarily. And they need to be held to account. I am still waiting for the day that the president comes out to a news conference and goes, hey, Xi, my good friend Xi, that $1.3 trillion in debt that you own of the United States is zero. He should do what Nancy Pelosi did. He should pick up that and rip it up and go, not only is that debt zeroed out, I'm sending you a bill for another trillion dollars. That needs to happen, folks. But you ready for this? So that's me in a flight suit. Guess what we did this morning? We, we got bullish. So we were looking at FXI this morning. FXI is the iShares China ETF. Holy crap. Look at this. In our live trade brief this morning at around 9.45 to 10 o'clock, we got in and bought a ton of calls out to May. Why, Wiz? You just MF China like there's no tomorrow. Ladies, first of all, look at the chart, folks. Do you think China, first of all, you, you're not allowed to, they banned short selling. They uh, ordered their sovereign wealth funds to buy. The PBOC, the People's Bank of China, you think our Fed's jumping into safe capitalism? The People's Bank of China is inject. There, I'm not even going to call it the invisible hand. It's the visible hand of the PBOC propping this market up. We're doing the same thing. Let's go over and take a look. Where's uh, so last week, folks? Um, the Federal Reserve. Where, where is it? So here you go. In, this is the world's largest asset manager. You know what he said the other day? Investing is dead. We'll just buy whatever the central banks are buying. <laughs> you ready for that? You don't have to be in a hedge fund or your own hedge fund manager. All you have to do, folks. So last week, last Thursday morning, and I got blown out of a couple trades last Thursday morning. I'm like, you know what? The unemployment report is going to be awful. I got some bearish trades on. We're going to print money. Horrible jobs report last Thursday. And within seconds, the Federal Reserve came out and said, that's it. The, folks, the Federal Reserve is buying ETFs. The Federal Reserve, ladies and gentlemen, is one step away from buying stocks. I guarantee you in this whole, quote, phase one or no, what are we in phase? We're in phase three of like this bailout. I guarantee you go in phase four, 
that the Federal Reserve or Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, goes to Congress to expand their charters so they can buy equities. So let me hit you with something. If, if you're looking at this chart and you're confused, this chart, ladies and gentlemen, of the S&P 500 is not the economy. This is the stock market. The economy right now, ladies and gentlemen, is in a recession. And Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan the other day in a note to his shareholders said, we are going to be in a bad recession. So let me, let me translate Wall Street talk to you. When Jamie Dimon says we're going to be in a bad recession, that equals a depression for you and me, right? What's the definition of a recession? When your neighbor loses their job. What's the definition of a depression? When you lose your job. <clears throat> this economy is hurtling towards a cliff. We're already in it, folks. Uh, I mean, the, the, the data yesterday was, I mean, uh, where is it? Uh, bu, bu, bu. The data yesterday, retail sales. Yeah, the retail sales and industrial production. It was, so awful March was a preview of far worse April for the US economy. Look at this. This is industrial production. This is the engine of America. Look at the last time, look at 2008 at the height of the financial crisis. This was yesterday. I mean, you can't even, I talked to a buddy of mine's a big econom, economist, well-known economist, and he's like, Wiz, math doesn't work anymore. There's no math. We're looking at staggering numbers in this country. But you ready for this? It doesn't matter. The stock market is not the economy, ladies and gentlemen. Look at what we've done in the S&P 500. You ready? We've imploded and we've bounced and we got back what? Half the implosion. We are lit. This 2800 level on the S&P 500 is half the implosion. This week, today, tomorrow, this weekend, we have a choice to make. Not us. The market does. It's either going to do that or that. We're not going to hover around this 2800 level for long. Old me? What do you mean old me? Like last week was this guy. In the blink of an eye, in my F-18 Hornet as an options trader, I can go from being completely defensive and we're all going to die and implode to offensive. And that blink of an eye was the Federal Reserve last Thursday morning. I'll never forget that. I'm sitting here. I'm like, oh, my God, that jobs report's awful. And I turn back to my computer, and then you hear the little breaking news thing on my four TVs. The Federal Reserve is just, I'm like, oh, my God. So the math, ladies and gentlemen, it's about, what is it, $6 trillion, ladies and gentlemen, that is being pumped into this market. Six, where's the math there? Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, let, let me show you this real quick. Uh, because I really don't want to talk about the social stuff, but this is, because as Gordon Gecko, I really don't care what's going on in America. As Wiz Buckley, this is heartbreaking. Look at this, look at this picture. This will be remembered. You're living in history, folks. This will be remembered forever, that picture right there. The Dow's best week since 1938, more than 16 million Americans have lost their job in three weeks. Look at that picture. That is, that is everything that's wrong with this country in one picture. And I gotta be honest with you, I, you know, being a Wall Street guy or a former Wall Street guy, this, these type of headlines are coming. Wall Street feasts on federal coronavirus aid while Main Street stars. I feel it, folks. I broke, I broke the law yesterday. I went and got a haircut. I took my Jack and I. He looked like a hippie. I looked like a freak. I'm like, we're getting our haircut. I called my, my barber. He's like, oh, we might get shut down. I'm like, if the cops come in here and try and shut you down, I hope they have their body cam on because we will make national news. The Constitution of the United States of America doesn't have an asterisk at the bottom that says, unless there's a pandemic. I got a permission slip to leave my house. It's called the Bill of Rights. I love what happened in Michigan yesterday. You can kiss my ass, Democrat governors and some Republican governors. But this is, this is getting a little ugly here, folks. 
Who's getting these hundreds of billions in the government aid? For now, the public may be in the dark. Ooh, boy. Yeah, oh, boy. I'm going to tell you that I still talk to a lot of my buzz up in Chicago, and there are billionaire hedge fund managers whose firms got bailed out. I know for a fact. We might learn years. Remember, when it comes to the federal government, ladies and gentlemen, the front page of every like government manual has that it does have an asterisk that says, "Hey, man, in case of emergency, just we need to do what we need to do." Did you see the governor of New Jersey last night on Tucker? Tucker Carlson's like, "Where in the Constitution does it say this or the Bill of Rights that you can do what you've done in New Jersey?" He's like, well, I wasn't thinking about the Bill of Rights. I was thinking about X, Y, and Z. It was classic. What am I getting at? The Federal Reserve and the United States Department of Treasury have been doing stuff. You saw like two weeks ago what happened. What's in your wallet? Apparently nothing. Capital One was bailed out. If you don't think this dude has been bailing out some of his Wall Street buddies, you're high. Do you think – the Secretary of the Treasury or the Federal Reserve would hold a news conference. Today at one o'clock, we're going to list all the financial firms and hedge funds we've had to bail out. We learned, or they learned from 2008, we had an, a whole Occupy Wall Street movement, folks. Do you remember that? Elizabeth Warren screaming at CEO, you know, Wall, Wells Fargo CEO, you need to be in jail. Do you think that the hedge funds or financial firms that have been bailed out in the past month are going to hold a news conference at one o'clock and go, yeah, we just want to let all our investors know that we had to get bailed out by the Fed. Of course, the answer is no. Right now, the Federal Reserve and, and the Treasury Department are like a duck. They're just cruising along on the water looking stately and underneath, man, their legs are going nuts. I'm telling you, that's one of the benefits you get here at Top Gun Options is I talk, I got a lot of friends, man. Well, I think they're friends. What am, I, uh, I'm, um, what am I building all of this up to? I'm building this all up to, in the blink of an eye, I went from being that dude to being this dude. And you can do that as an options trader, folks. That's, this is the $6 trillion, folks. Did you hear me? Let me say that slower because I can't even fathom that money. Okay. I can't even fathom that money being injected into this market. It's got to go somewhere, folks. Liquidity goes somewhere, right? Liquidity is going to drive this market higher. You can't fight the Fed, period. You can't fight the Fed. So let's talk about trading this, right? So this is the flow that I do here at Topkin Options in my briefs, SOT. I just gave you kind of a strategic brief and operational brief. Now we can get tactical and look at potential trades. The one thing that I do like is absolutely getting long FXI. FXI is the iShares China large cap ETF. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, after just giving you that brief, you know my skin is crawling that I'm talking about getting bullish on China. I don't care. And wearing my flight suit as an American, I think it's a disgrace. Guess what? Me thinking it's a disgrace doesn't make me money. Me, You have to be bullish on a country that gets the world sick and doesn't care. You have to be bullish on a country that's like, you know what? We might just go into Europe and take control of all these countries. And like the Fed in the United States, folks, there's a put underneath it. Why do you think this FXI, it didn't even implode as much as we did? Look at the FXI. Their damn country ceased working, and it just kind of went down a little bit. And now it's up and hovering. This ain't no invisible hand, folks, of the PBOC. It's the actual physical hand. So we actually have what I would call a put under We have a safety net underneath this. So we could do a couple things. We could, like we did this morning over at Topkin Options, we bought a ton of the May 20, what, 39 and a half calls. Oh, my God. 
let me let me bring up a picture of something, folks. Let, let me bring up this was taken this morning. This picture was taken this morning. Everybody see this? This is the May 20, 39 and a half calls. This morning, folks, before my brief, you see that? That's the volume. Now, let's go to the screen. Now look at the volume in the 39 and a half, 5,000. Wow, we did that. That's us. Let's take a look at the stocks too. I like those. So when you buy calls, folks, you're bullish, right? Look at that. That's where we did it. This was our live trade brief this morning. Let me get a line. We moved this mark. How much are these calls right now? Sorry, hold on. 39 and a half. Yeah, about 49 cents. This morning, folks, what was it? 44, 45, 46, whatever. I think around four when we initially looked at them, they were at 44 cents. They're up four cents. That doesn't sound like a lot unless, for example, like I did this morning, I bought, I think, 200 of them. Already up 800 bucks in... Uh, and what, whatever that was, an hour. But here's what I'm going to add to this thing. I'm going to turn this into what I call a burner trade. I'm going to throw on a bull put spread underneath this thing. I'm bullish. I'm going to use puts, and it's a spread. It really looks like this thing's got support right around what? This 37, maybe 36 and a half. Let's go out to that the, that middle of May. Wait for the, yeah, th yeah, 36 and a half. Let's take a look at a 36 and a half, 36 bull put spread. And I'd probably do 150. Let me just check this out real quick, okay? Perfect, all right. So when I bought those calls down here with all uh, of our members and we moved the market, that was a debit. I came out of, I hate the term debit, right? Debit card. We're going to debit your account. Debits suck. I like credits, man. Give me a credit. So what we're going to do is a tactic called a bull put spread. I'm going to sell 150. Why 150? Give me about two minutes to explain. Of the May 20, that's the regular May monthly expiration. The May 20s would be, let me go out to May. One, two, three. The third Friday of every month is when regular equity options expire. So on the E-Trade platform, when it says May 20, it's actually May 15th. I know some brokerage platforms say May 15 over on E-Trade, it says that. See, these are the weeklies on E-Trade. April 24th, May 1st, May 8th. Oh, there's the week, uh, the regular monthly one. All right, so selling 150 of May's 36 and a half puts. Well, Wiz, what if you're wrong, man? Did I don't know. The PBOC just can't prop up their market anymore. They're getting reinfected, whatever. The FXI implodes. Well, that's going to suck. But we're buying some downside puts as our kind of hedge, as our protection. So I'm neutral to bullish on FXI. I'm using puts, and it's a spread. This tactic is called a bull put spread. Now, it's also called a credit spread, right? We're getting paid to do this. We're bringing in a credit of about two thousand bucks okay now let's take a look as a fighter pilot as an options trader the only thing that i care about in this trade before i place it is what how much i can potentially lose so our max potential loss in this trade is fifty five hundred bucks okay what's that based on 150 contracts. You don't want to risk 5,600 bucks. You don't do 50, uh, 150 contracts. You want to risk 10 grand? You do 300. You want to risk a thousand? You do, I don't know, 15, 30. I, I can't tell you what to do. I don't give investment advice. I'm not a registered investment advisor or broker dealer. At Topkin Options, I'm going to teach you how to trade, and then you have to go figure uh, your individual risk out. For example, you know, on a hundred thousand dollar model portfolio. Maybe you come up with what I call your SOP, your standard operating procedure that says you don't want to risk more than 5% or five grand on any one trade, right? 
you have to come up with your own SOP. At Topkin Options, I'll kind of share with you what mine is, uh, but you have to come up with your own. But just like an aviator, before I get airborne, I'm going to put a check mark next to that and go, I acknowledge that risk. I acknowledge that's my max potential loss. Roger that. Then I can bring my eyes up to here and go, okay, so I'm risking 55 to potentially make two. Right? So, this, uh, yes, this is a live account. It says it right there. Individual brokerage account because the paper trading platforms are the the quotes are kind of low. So yep, this is a this is a live account. Uh, there it is, live account value. So yep, this is a live account. Um, but uh, again, showing you a live account, I am not giving you investment advice. The paper trading platforms suck. Um, so in a training environment, folks, over at Topkin Options, when we are training, I absolutely have to use a paper trading account uh, because it, 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 not using a paper trading account can be construed as giving investment advice. And we ain't doing that. So, okay. Uh, how do you make money in this trade? You make money one of three ways or uh, three out of four ways. FXI goes up. FXI stays where it is. FXI can even go down a little bit, folks, as long as it stays above your break even. How's that, how do you lose money in this trade? It implodes. If FXI goes below that break even, that's where the losses start happening. Okay. So the good rule of thumb for me to eject out of a trade, meaning bail out of it, uh, and reduce my losses, I simply double the credit that I take in. If I'm taking in a credit of 14 cents, if it goes up to 28, that's when I kind of scratch my chin and go, huh, why is FXI going down and should I eject from the trade and limit my losses? Because I don't want to lose that 5,500 bucks, man. That would suck. So in every trade, we have what we call our eject criteria. We also have our profit target, 789. If I'm looking at a 70, 80, or 90% profit on the credit that I took in, I close the trade. I don't sit here and say, hey, man, that's awesome. I'm up 1,900 bucks. There's another 200 bucks in there, and I'm going to, you know, that's 200 bucks. Pigs get slaughtered. Do not turn a 70, 80, 90% winning trade into a 100% loser. I've done it before. The day before expiration, this trades up two grand, and I'm like, I want that extra hundred bucks. And the next day, Xi Jinping, you know, invades Taiwan and FXI implodes. That can happen, folks. <laughs> Do not turn a winning trade into a losing trade. You have to fly, trade your SOP, I call it, right? That's it's just that's just smart, absolute money management. Do not turn a winning trade into a losing trade. I know that sounds like Common sense, but sometimes common sense ain't that common. Max dash Corley. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. I'll, you know what? Let me let me do some stuff, and then I will uh, answer FTE some questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's. Thank you for reminding me. I, I man, I talk all day about this trading. Okay. Um, so here's uh, here's what we're we're gonna do. We don't we've I've turned off all the trials on our site. I've turned off monthly memberships. We actually uh, I wasn't even gonna make an offer because we're kind of full to be honest with you, man. Uh, people learn very harshly in the past month or two how markets work. Um, so we actually have been turning people away uh, from Topkin Options, but we will allow our full throttles closed. Uh, just about everything's closed, folks. We have a joint. Uh, program where you can get into our weekly options brief, which is every Monday uh, at noon, and then our primary live trade brief, which is every Tuesday at 10. The weekly options brief is quick. It's tactical. This week, we have uh, two trades. Uh, we had a bear call spread on Vail Mountain Resorts. That is at 89% profit right now, 2800 bucks. And we have an iron condor on FXI on that uh, uh, on the China ETF that is also at about 80-ish uh, percent profit. Uh, primary live trade brief this week, we have a iron condor on Brazil. So really good looking trades this week in these two services. That's what you can get access to. We're going to give you access to uh, these two skill-based live trade briefs. 
uh, our full throttle training. So if you don't even know what an option is, we can get you up to speed uh, to learn how to trade options in a 45 minute presentation. It is physically impossible for me to teach you uh, everything you need to learn about uh, trading options. That's why we have eight uh, training sessions that take a building block approach, meaning step one is this is a call, this is a put all the way up to, hey man, this is a straddle, a strangle, a condor. Uh, we'll give you access to our three skill-based manuals, uh, our trade plan and our OPCL. Um, so, uh, and then text and email alerts. Don't worry if you can't make it to those briefs uh, because we send out uh, text alerts and email alerts. You don't have to attend those sessions live, sent out via text and email, and those sessions uh, are recorded. Um, I'm Chris, for example, I'm so geeked, been a subscriber for almost three years now, and this is the first time I've been able to attend live. Uh, he was only watching uh, those replays. This is the training schedule. This is what you get access to uh, when you become a member. So, uh, you know, like I said, we take that building block approach uh, from the basics of what options are all the way up to, um, you know, advanced tactics and uh, uh, and how to employ them in, in all sorts of uh, market conditions. Um, let me switch over to here. Uh, 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 and that's, you know, and like I said, we'll give you access to all the manuals too, the primary, intermediate, uh, and advanced uh, workbook there. Uh, those sessions, you gotta watch them all, man. We're gonna do another set of uh, eight of them live next month. Uh, but right now you get the, the access to the ones that we did uh, most recently, which were uh, last month there. Okay. Yeah. Let me, so here's the link. Yeah. The, duh. I didn't even put that in there. That was kind of stupid. Um, right here. It's uh, topkinoptions.com slash FT dax dash max dash quarterly. We only have, we, we have either annual or quarterly uh, memberships. We're not doing monthlies folks. There's just too many. I don't think I, I, I there's no way I ever would have thought in my life that we'd be turning away potential members, but we we are we we don't we simply don't have the room uh, for folks. Um, uh, it's way too many monthly people. Um, Fabio, I noticed there. Are, I'm, oh, I love this one. I noticed there are many negative reviews of Americans who have invested in your programs. Dozens have claimed to not make profits with your system, especially just like the upsells. One of the programs. How will I respond to these comments? Uh, I won't respond to those comments. I will uh, have these people on this on our Facebook page. Why don't you take a look at all of these uh, comments? There are two websites, folks. Uh, the one website. Uh, called trading schools. You guys do know who the who uh, he's actually being served with a lawsuit, and he's being served with a couple lawsuits. Um, the guy that runs trading reviews, uh, where is this guy? So he's being sued uh, by me. He's being sued by these people. He's in a bunch of federal lawsuits. So uh, Emmett Moore uh, called me up one day and said. Um, if you don't pay me, I'm going to write negative reviews and pay other people to write negative reviews about you. He is being sued. Uh, we're contacting the attorney general. Just kind of Google uh, the names of the people that run those sites, uh, and you can take a look at online who this guy is. Emmett Moore served three years in federal prison uh, for uh, securities fraud. So that trading schools thing, folks, all of those reviews are uh, BS, period. So why don't you go to our uh, Facebook page and read reviews from real people as opposed to people who were paid to write negative reviews. Uh, we are filing a lawsuit in the, uh, 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 he, he's, I don't think he's been served yet, but uh, yeah, we're, uh, I love answering that. So why don't you click on that link and read the opinion of 92 real people who actually are real. See all these people, these are real. So that guy we will see in court uh, and he's being sued by a lot of people and he might be going to jail again. So, uh, <laughs> I love, I love stuff like that. That's, thank you for asking that. I appreciate that. So the, the, here you go. Want to go read all these, man. These are, these are current members. Uh, all, all the dates are on here. So that guy is, uh, is a, uh, is a, uh, disgrace. He's a disgusting human being calling people up and saying, I'm going to write a negative review about your company if you don't pay him. It's a crime. 
it's a it's actually a federal felony so this guy is going to he's in a lot of trouble folks uh yeah his name is emmett moore if you google his name and look into everything that the man has done th there are countless people who have tried to have been extorted by the guy so you can go believe uh so who are you going to believe a guy who served his country for 15 years flew combat missions over iraq and is a decorated fighter pilot or a guy that served three years in federal prison for securities fraud if you're going to believe him please don't sign up and become a member because you have zero situational awareness all right um ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah actually well yeah folks i mean look at this when I started this brief, I think there was 5,000 calls. Now there's 5,200. I, yeah, I do. I, I, I covered the bull put spread, but I, I still like these upside calls. I'm very bullish uh, on ch – and again, it sucks to say, folks. Um, yes, Nicole, I do. I do wear short pants and a helmet. <laughs> Good to see you, Nicole. Um, I do like these upside calls. I do like uh, – it makes my skin crawl, actually admitting that I'm bullish on China. But folks, you got to be bullish on a country that doesn't care about infecting the world, uh, is trying to buy companies that are being beaten up right now, is testing nuclear weapons and is sailing aircraft carriers through the Strait of Taiwan. That's the country that Gordon Gecko would be bullish on. Me as a lieutenant, I sailed in these waters. I've, I've been trained to fight the Chinese. So, you know, over a beer, we can talk about how I feel about China. <laughs> But over uh, over a bottle of Schomburg champagne, I will tell you that you have to be bullish on on that. Period. You, I, it, you know, some of these things are called a hold your nose trade, folks. Uh, I do. I I, I like e trade. Uh, I, it's good for training. Uh, there are good fills, and uh, that's that's what we use in our private uh, in our private afterburner group. I do. Yeah, I definitely like. Uh, I like uh, using E-Trade. Uh, yeah, the link is right here. It's uh, topkinoptions.com slash ft dash max dash quarterly. That's a hell of a long URL. Ooh, well, that one's even uglier. Yeah, I'll, I'll put that one in there. That's the redirect. No, it, no it's it, it's in the chat box here. You can, you can click on it. Uh, y yeah, uh, I absolutely. Uh, you don't get it. Solo Amazon's a separate service here at Top Can Op. Holy crap, look at Amazon. 20, I said this would be a $3,000 stock in a year. I'm going to be completely wrong. It'll be in a half. Look at up 129 bucks today, folks. Our Solo Amazon service, the people that we've made millionaires in, in that service alone. Uh, so I could not be more bullish on Amazon. I, 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 it still has higher to go. After this thing is all over with, folks, the only companies that might be existing are Amazon. Where's my uh, Jeff Bezos thing? <laughs> Bezos wealth soars by 24 billion as 17 million Americans lose their jobs. <laughs> push it up, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm trying, man. I, I don't need to push Amazon up. It's going up on its uh, by itself. All right, guys, I got to run. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I'm up on my time here and I want to keep Anna and all these folks uh, on their timeline. Uh, we don't have monthlies. We don't have trials. We're not doing any of that stuff anymore, folks. If you want to get airborne uh, with one of the best in the business uh, and do me a favor, go Google uh, the, uh, yeah, I, I love the negative reviews about me online. Why don't you come read the real reviews by real human beings instead of uh, people that were paid uh, to write reviews and who is, uh, we're suing. Uh, the man is, uh, we're going, well, well, we'll see what happens with that, but we are uh, pursuing litigation against uh, guys, and we're also contacting the attorney general of the state of Florida. So maybe he will go back to prison again for committing more crimes, extortion. So, all right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Uh, happy uh, manual. Shoot uh, our support uh, an email, support at topgunoptions.com. We'll, we'll hook you up with that request. So, okay, guys, I got to run. Have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge and God bless. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys later. We'll see you. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, glad to be here with you all. And let's go ahead and get started. Looks like you can see my screen. And thanks for the introduction, Anna. So we're talking about some automated option strategies, probably a unique approach that you've not experienced before. And I can say that because it's really something proprietary to us. And we can do this with bullish, bearish, or even non-directional markets. So with that said, I will go ahead and get started. Remember, we're talking about speculating and risk.
So we wanna to try to profit as prices move up, down, or sideways, but we have to accept risk for doing that. So take a brief moment to look at that risk disclosure, please, it is important. All right, very good. Just keep in mind, risk capital should be used when you're trading and past performance is no guarantee of future results. So let's go ahead and stick with us till the end. We're gonna use our time wisely. I will not waste your time. We'll have a live demonstration, something unique and new in terms of a trading solution. So we're gonna look at what's happening in the markets, a little bit about us, three common barriers to trading success. We'll look at stock indexes versus stocks, probabilities. We'll look at short and long futures option strategies. Then we'll have a live demonstration with a special offer and some FAQs as well. Now you might be thinking when I said futures options, that's great, but I've never traded futures options. And I don't know which markets to trade and I don't have enough time and I'm not a Wall Street some something or another. Well, don't worry about any of that. Uh, we're gonna remove the guesswork. We can do this in minutes a day and we're gonna discuss the advantages of futures options. So let's look at what's going on this week. Looking at the VIX, well off the highs, stocks still continue to soar off those lows. Jobless claims are through the roof. I think, uh, what's it now, 20 million people in the last few weeks here have uh, filed unemployment. Financials from companies, uh, uh, earnings, I mean, from the financials were terrible and uh, manufacturing retail numbers almost some of the worst ever still talk of turning the economy on um, with the uh, i guess the magical switch not so easy to do but here's a look at the vix it was up above 80 now we're down closer to 40. here's the cnn fear and greed index kind of a sentiment indicator if you're not familiar with it that's okay but uh when the market was uh essentially off, off the low here in March, uh, we were down here pegged at the most extreme level of fear. Then just as opposite in February at the highs, we were all the way at the greed. So it's a great con contrarian indicator at times. You can see the history of that fear and greed index. It's kind of interesting to look at. So here's what the NASDAQ's up to. This is just from this morning. Uh, obviously you're all aware of that. Same here with the S&P 500. Sometimes it's good to review and get some context of what we're doing. I think we're uh, looking at about a 50% retracement here. But anyway, so this morning you saw unemployment probably 15% or greater now. 20 million people have filed claims. Manufacturing, as uh, to be expected, is uh, plunging. Manufacturing index record low. Empire State Manufacturing Index. Retail sales plunging uh, in March. Uh, here's Goldman Sachs, though. They say the bottom is in. They were a little bit bearish, and they changed their mind. On the other hand, here's the guy says the bottom is nowhere near. <laughs> they expect a massive hit down to 1275 on the S&P. So that would be, um, well, I guess anything's possible. Let's put it that way. Ray Dalio, uh, largest hedge fund. Bridgewater, he thinks we're heading into a Great Depression. Wall Street's turning bullish this week. Um, changing their tune a bit, a lot of Wall Street at least. Here's an image that maybe some of you have seen floating around, a bit of a disconnect there. Best week in the Dow since 1938. At the same time, we've got probably our worst uh, employment results. So there's, uh, there's enough to make you give you a headache, right? Scratch your head. But remember markets and prices um, are always right. We aren't. So it can be expensive. If you wanna to try to convince the markets that you are right, it's from Market Wizard. It's a quite a great book if you haven't read it. There's a Market Wizards 2 by Jack Schwager. And so remember, we try to take what the market offers, trade the environment that we're in. You don't want to fight the tape. So how about a new approach where you don't always need to be precise? And with direction or timing, you can speculate or hedge. In terms of speculating, how about uh, Valentine there and uh, Winthorpe from Trading Places, Trading Orange Juice, that was speculation. And, or you can hedge. Maybe you can hedge your investment portfolio using some of the strategies we're gonna talk about with options. Now, some of you might think, well, hedging is kind of boring. Well, take a look at this. You tell me if this is boring. Article here about universal investment, Mark Spitznagel, and he, ran, he runs a, a, basically a fund that uh, 
buys options, buys protection against a market crash, buys puts, deep out of the money puts. So this was in February, just two months ago. Article about him, I kind of follow him every now and then. So what do you think happened in March? His fund gained 4,144%. So not too boring. So if you're thinking hedging is for, <laughs> for uh, you know, couch potatoes, think again. That's a, uh, that's a great story though, I like that. So a little bit about us, we're AltaVest, we're a brokerage firm since 1997, that's us on the trading floor at the uh, CME on the, probably near the options trading pit there, some of our floor traders, and we've been doing this since 1997, a long time, and we've traded millions and millions of futures and options contracts, it's a picture I took in New York, the NYMEX, a little blurry, but still looks kind of cool, and we're located in California and Illinois, of course we're regulated, this was kind of fun, just a low quality video the trading floor so that was probably i don't know 10 12 years ago and it does not look like that now and a lot of things are going electronic as you know so um, we're going to talk about that as well so experience we've had a lot of it been a big part of the growth here's the e-mini s p 500 uh, options on futures, average daily volume, open interest. I see it growing and growing, growing. This is uh, last updated here about three or four months ago, so I'm sure it's a lot larger now. So along the way, we've we've done a lot of things, and we haven't always failed. We just like to say we found ways that don't work. That's a uh, a better way to put it. So who am I? I am Eric Gebhardt. I've been doing this about 29 years. Co-founder of AltaVest and I've been licensed since 1991. I have my business degree from the University of Southern California. I got started actually my interest in futures and options. That is actually my book and I pulled it out. Uh, it was in the garage, that proverbial story, that cliche, dusty book in the garage. That's exactly what happened. I was looking and looking and I finally found it. There's the chapter on options at the time we were studying and I was taking notes because believe it or not, I was interested. So. And uh, we were studying the invasion of Kuwait and how crude oil and gold prices were moving at the time. And it really, really piqued my interest. Um, so that stuck with me. I did get involved in securities with my securities licenses. And soon enough, though, the futures options markets whispered in my ear. So I was hired at, a, hired at an options trading firm. And that's where I cut my teeth on spreads and volatility and all, the, all that good stuff, the A to Z in between. So... With that said, let's jump into three common barriers to trading success. This is what we think are three of the biggest problems or hurdles, frustrating contradictions, a lot of noise in the market. Here's a guy, he thinks the S&P 500 is gonna be at 3,600 by the end of this year. Uh, other people are saying that's a pipe dream, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Mark Mobius is one of them, says stocks aren't, aren't even at their bottom yet. So keep your powder dry. So how do you make heads or tails of that? And what about precision when you're trading uh, stocks or mutual funds or ETFs? A lot of times you need to be correct trading the, the market, the direction, the strategy, the entry timing and price, what type of order would you use? And then your exit, that's probably the most important thing. How do you manage your risk and your reward? And then emotions, I, I don't know, I think this is probably the biggest one. How do you, you know, how do you handle the hope, the fear, the greed, anxiety, the frustration when you're trading. And we can really eat ourselves up. We become our own worst enemy. Mark Lindheim here says, we have bad wiring. We have a built-in bias to make poor investment decisions. And what he's saying is we sell the lows and we buy the highs. And that's not going to be a strategy that uh, you want to stick with. I thought this was a great phrase. Your brain is killing your returns from real investment advice. Here's Motley Fool, three common biases. Confirmation, anchoring, and recency bias. Let's talk about recency bias. Article in the Wall Street Journal a couple years ago kind of stuck with me about mutual funds. People just pick those five-star funds and think that's all they need to do. Well, here's what happens. Five-star funds over a three, five, 10-year period of time all become three-star, and then the one-star funds become two-star. So everything converges to average over a period of time. So just looking at those rankings does not help. Now let's look at stock market indexes versus individual stocks. We'll go over this quickly. You're familiar with all this probably, but 
Why do we like an index versus an individual stock? It's convenient. We can just track one or two indexes and not thousands of securities, and they're less volatile. And here's an ind here's Virgin Galactic down 78% since its February high. And you think, okay, well, that's a new issue. That's going to be more volatile. Well, here, what about Boeing? Same thing. It was up uh, almost at 400 just about six months ago. And then it, let's see here, we got to around, what is that? Almost, uh, what, mid 80s. So a lot of volatility in individual stocks, as you know, and there's non-correlation between an index and a stock a lot of times. This is appropriate. Here's Zoom communication versus NASDAQ. NASDAQ sell-off here in March, and here goes Zoom, zooming up. Everyone's jumping online. Everyone's using Zoom now. So anyway, now with that said, let's look at insurance companies. You know how they make money. You pay the premiums. So they receive the premiums, so they are paid to assume risk. They manage that risk and time. They do insure themselves by hedging. They are consistent and patient in their plan, and they look at probabilities, long-term probabilities. They use statistics, actuarials, expected returns. Simply put, they're using math, and they'll be in, they they love to do that, just like a casino. They just use math. That's why they can build all those big, you know, showrooms and whatnot because the odds are in their favor in the long run. You play roulette enough times, you spin that wheel with green and you're gonna lose $5.26 on average, and that's the house edge. So they would like to have you sit there for you know, 24 hours a day spinning that wheel, even though at times they will pay out and you will win. In the long run, they're gonna win. So it's the law of large numbers, it's like flipping a coin. So you do it a million times, you'll get 50-50 heads and tails. You do it uh, 10 times, you might, get, you might get all tails or all heads. So, Higher probability base hits. Let's look at an analogy here with baseball. So when you're playing baseball, a lot of times, uh, if you're trying to hit a home run or something like a grand slam, you're gonna strike out or get out. But what about just going for a base hit, just reaching base? Well, Rod Carew did that a lot. He was a batting champion and he hit no home runs. Most valuable player, batting titles, blah, blah, blah. So the point is, you don't have to hit home runs. We want to go for base hits, and that's what we like to talk about with trading options. We call these higher probability option strategies. So we're collecting premium by selling short options or going short options, and we're consistent about doing it. We're patient. We need to manage risk, expect to have losers, manage reward. You can't get greedy. You'll get slaughtered and need the proper tools. So that's what we're going to talk about. So look at some short option strategies. Essentially put, you're collecting premium. So that can be non-directional, or you can have bullish or bearish as well. And we're looking at higher probability outcomes with predetermined risk. So for example, credit spreads where you collect premiums, all these positions are quotes insured, predetermined risk reward, that may be non-directional. So here's an example of a strategy, and we'll show you that in the demo in just a second. You have a large margin of error between uh, the calls on the upside, the puts on the downside, and the markets may move a lot in the meantime, and we'll show you why this um, is a strategy that we like a lot. Before we do that, let's look at a couple things here with terminology. We'll look at the Greeks. We can go way into the weeds on Rho and Gamma and so on and so forth, but we're gonna look at two. Uh, just Delta, very simple, very easy. If you know this, that's fine. If you don't, it'll go, uh, it'll, it'll, you'll think, aha. <laughs> so here's an example, we'll go quickly. S&P's at 2,500. Here's a 2,150 put at 15 points. Delta's 0.25. Let's say that June S&P drops to 2,490. So it drops 10 points. So what's the value of this put? It was 15. Well, now it's 18 and three quarters because of the 0.25 Delta. That means the, the uh, value of that option increased by 25%. Now, really, we like to look at Delta as approximate probability of expiring in the money. So, 25% chance of expiring in the money if the delta is 0.25, but conversely, 75% chance of expiring worthless. And remember, delta is always moving with price and time. It's not static and is not the probability of a winning trade. So don't conflate the two. Some people think, oh, you know, that means I have a probability of, you know, X amount of winning. Well, it doesn't always work like that. So now let's look at theta. That's just a sensitivity to time 
as you know, options are a wasting or decaying asset. You hold them long enough and everything has a lifespan and they'll go to zero if they're out of the money. So we refer to time as theta and they're expressed as a negative number equaling one day of time decay. And what do I mean by that? So here's a premium of 10. If theta is negative 0 0.05, that means the next day the premium would be 9.95 .95, and after that 9.90 and so on and so forth. So that's what it looks like, a simple theta decay chart there. As you approach time zero, the percent of the premium remaining on that option really starts to fall off, especially in the last uh, month or, or so of the options lifespan. So really, as a credit spread trader, you want to be boring. You want to be the most boring person in the world. You want to watch paint dry. Your whole goal is to sell these out-of-the-money spreads and then watch time pass. That's the whole goal. But of course, it's never that easy, never that simple. You need the proper tools. We'll show you how to do that. So here's an example of a, of a call spread. Let's look at this real quickly. Here's the S&P floating around here in this example. And you think maybe it's, uh, it's gone uh, too far, too fast, and perhaps uh, the market's going to stall out and maybe even drop. So you sell a 35-30 call. You collect four and a half points. You buy a 35.50, you pay two and a quarter, and the net premium you collect, $112.50. So this is on the E-mini S&P 500, every point's $50. And of course, you'd calculate your commission as part of that too. Same thing here with selling a put spread, just the opposite. Market's moving up and you don't uh, necessarily think it's going to you know, uh, drop like a rock. You think it's just going to kind of bounce around, maybe even drop a little bit or even go higher. And so you sell a 29.90 put, you buy a 29.70 put, and the net result is you collect two points or $100. These are not naked options. So these are all covered or insured or hedged positions. Your maximum risk is capped, and you do not want to end up naked like that poor cat. All right. So we need that insurance uh, when you're doing options trading. We do not sell naked options, only covered spreads. And also, if you sell naked options, I guarantee you're going to run into margin problems. And that's a mess. It's a nightmare. You do not want to get involved with margin issues. So here's an iron condor. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe not. But it's a non-directional strategy. You collect premium. It's just a combination of the two spreads we just looked at, the bull put spread and the bear call spread. And you just do those simultaneously. In this case here, you're selling an out-of-the-money call spread and an out-of-the-money put spread. You collect premium on both sides of that trade, and you're looking for the market to stay within a certain range over a period of time. Now, here's a short option strategy that's uh, probably something you've not heard of. That's because I guess you could say we created the, the name for it. And although I have... Um, I think I've heard other people talk about something like this, but I'll show you why it's so difficult for other people to do. So it's a non-directional strategy and it's a variation on a condor. We call it a dragonfly. So here's what that looks like. So you can see here, similar to a condor, um, you're selling calls and puts on, for a net credit. You see there's six legs, three calls and three puts, and you're selling four out of the money puts and then buying three further out of the money puts, and then buying one closer to the money put. So in this case, uh, it's uh, 40 points closer to the money, so 28.50 versus 28.90. And let's look at the calls, how that works. So once again, you sell four of these 33.30 calls, you buy three further out of the money calls, and then you buy one 32.90 call that's closer to the money by 40 points. And this tra trade structure makes a big, big difference in your risk reward uh, characteristics of uh, this trade because you can see the option here, this call that you're long, this uh, put that you're long. In this case, let's look at the call. It's 40 points closer to the money compared to the ones that you've sold, and that's a big difference. So in this case, let's say the market's moving closer and closer uh, to these short calls. This one long call that you own is 40 points closer to the money, and it's going to actually gain in value at a much more rapid rate, and in fact, to hold its value uh, much more so than these out-of-the-money calls you sold. So we're going to look at that demonstration and show you how that works. So there are additional short option directional strategies 
that you can collect premium with. And here's a variation on what we just saw. You can just do half a dragonfly. So take half the dragonfly. Maybe you just want to do the call side of a dragonfly or perhaps just the put side. And then there are bearish directional strategies. So these have asymmetric return possibilities. And let's, uh, let's take a look at what I'm talking about. We call this a bear hedge. And essentially, you're selling an out-of-the-money call spread, and you use that money to finance the purchase of an out-of-the-money put spread. So uh, you're looking here, of course, for the market to decline quickly enough so that the put spread you own gains a value, and the call spread that you sold uh, loses value so that you can cover it for a lower price. And of course, you can do a bull hedge as well. And let's take a look here at the bull hedge. Same type of thing. You're selling an out of the money put spread, and then you're buying an out of the money call spread and looking for the market to rally so that you end up making essentially profit on both sides of that trade. So here's the problem though. How would you even know which options to, to trade with? Where do you even start? What do you sell? What do you buy? What's the correct price? How do you know when to buy and sell, manage risk and profits? Looks like uh, Jackie Chan's a little confused. So that's the answer, Theta Trader. And this is where you can sell and buy time with pre-built credit and debit spreads. And how do we do this? We have a proprietary algorithm that creates what we call Theta Trades. These are the same strategies that we kind of just looked at and the more sophisticated traders would use. So our algorithm pre-builds these trades for bull bear and flat markets. And we also can automate our risk and our profit management with something called the RTI. It's a color coded uh, system. So we're gonna show you that here. So we're gonna show you how to take action after we're done. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into the demo. Let me go ahead and jump over to that. Okay, you are staring at the dashboard for ThetaTrader. So you can see here, I'll explain all this in a second, but you can see here, these are all the open sold positions at a glance. Any uh, open long or bought positions, you can see at a glance right on your dashboard. Any account info here, this is just a demo account. You can see the current quotes. And starting at the top, this is probably where most people are going to uh, look when they want to place a trade. You can see these are the theta trades for today, and you can choose if you want bullish strategies or bearish or neutral. So you can see how theta trader will just populate all the different strategies available. And then if you hover your mouse over, you can see what that is here the e mini SP 500, the e mini NASDAQ 100. Oh, excuse me here. There we go, and then the E-mini Russell 2000. So these are the markets that we trade, and for the most part, we're gonna trade on the ES. That's where the vast majority of the volume and open interest is, and that's where you wanna be. You wanna have um, make it easy for yourself to get in and out of these markets. So let's look at a neutral strategy because we kind of looked at those in the presentation here, and let's look at an iron condor. So you click on this, you see all of the Theta trades available for today, anywhere from 16 days to 65 days till expiration. And the algorithm has built all these trades for you, pre-populated each one of these trades. And I'll show you one of those in just a second, but you can see here, this is your potential profit at expiration and your targeted annualized return at expiration. But keep in mind, these numbers here are really just to compare one trade to another. You can't expect these types of returns. Uh, it just assumes, for example, that if you annualize this 16-day trade, that you just turn that same trade over every 16 days, and that would not be realistic. So keep that in mind. And also, I want to point out that we do not hold all trades till expiration. So if you have this potential profit at expiration, once again, it's really just to compare one trade to another. And we always suggest closing out your trade whether it's for a win or a loss prior to expiration, and I'll show you how we do that. And we can automate all that. But let's go ahead and click on this one here. It has 65 days. It's your June end, uh, end of month. I'm sorry, not June end of month. It's just your June quarterly. And let's take a look here. First thing I like to do is look at a chart. It gives perspective. So you can see here is where we are right now. 
and you're selling uh, this out of the money call spread here and this out of the money put spread and that's your condor trade of course that's done simultaneously we do not leg in or leg out let's go back here and let me point out the screen here and what this all looks like and let's see if you can see my screen okay i think you probably can maybe that makes it easier so here you have days till expiration you have the settlement the net premium your maximum put risk and call risk and what we do here is we look at the maximum put risk as the margin to hold the trade uh, minus the premium received, of course, and then factoring in commission. So essentially, your cash required for this trade is 866, and your maximum potential is 134. Now, you might think, well, why would I risk 866 to make 134? Well, let's talk about that. We talked about higher probability outcomes, and we talked about delta. So here are the 2160 put that is being sold has a delta of 9.85. So that means there's over a 90% probability, according to the delta, that that option will expire out of the money. And then looking at the call, the same thing, the delta is 6.69. So you're looking at about 93% probability that that option also will expire out of the money. And if you wanna look at these metrics here and you wanna learn more about it, you can take a deeper dive and there's a help file on ThetaTrader, but this is your targeted return on cash, 15.47, and then your targeted annualized return uh, here as well and we'll look at that and compare it to another strategy in just a second but you can see here how it's pre-populated as a cell and the quantity is always defaulting to one your pricing is all established for you you can change it if you want but quite frankly people don't and that's the whole point of theta trader to make it easy and let's go ahead and place that order and you can see here it just assumes you're filled because it's a demo account so that's just that simple. Now let me show you something. Let me squeeze this down a notch here. There's also a trading simulator. And you can back test, and I've loaded some trades here. And let's look at these. Here is, let me squeeze this down just a bit. Here's an iron condor from last year. And let's just go ahead and you can use these buttons here. And you can play the trade day by day and watch it unfold and you'll see down below here as each day goes by the trade is starting to go from red to green the PL is turning profitable that's in large part due to theta decay see the RTI column is all green that means good do nothing just sit back and do nothing and then look at that it turns blue and blue is take a profit so theta trader says the algorithm says now you need to close this trade out and I'm going to show you how you can automate this. You do not have to watch it. You do not have to do anything. You can automate this whole process and uh, make it really simple. So that's how easy that can be sometimes uh, with, say, that um, an iron condor. Now let's look at another condor because sometimes people think, well, that's great, but um, maybe I want to hang into the trade and make even more money. I want to squeeze every last juice out of that trade. Well, instead of uh, playing it, let's just go right to the end. Let me show you what happens here. So this trade here, a lot, with 37, 36 days till expiration, somewhere around in here, looks like it turns profitable. But what if you had stayed in that trade and ignored that signal? You would have taken a winning trade and turned it into a loser because red means too much risk, get out. And you do not want to do that. That's why you want to automate this whole process. So if it turns blue, you're automatically closing out that trade for a gain. And if it turned red first, then you would automatically close it out for a loss. Now let's look here at another Condor trade. And I want to show you something here. You can see this Condor went from green to yellow, which is elevated risk, and then it went to red. Too much risk on january 16 of this year too much risk get out of the trade and take your loss so what if you had instead of a condor what if you had placed a dragonfly on that same day on november 20. so let's look at a dragonfly you can see here the same day november 20 and before we look at that let me go back actually and go to the dashboard and show you how a dragonfly works on the theta trade dashboard so here we have the dragonflies. 
we'll just go ahead and click one. It works basically the same way as a condor or any other trade. The algorithm will pre-populate all the strikes for you. And then you can look at the chart, get an overview of what the trade looks like. And you can see the difference on the dragonfly with the uh, higher amount of uh, put risk. Basically, your cash required is higher and your profit potential is higher simply because you're selling four calls and four puts. It's always in quantities of four that you're selling. And you can see the deltas are the same on these puts and calls. So on any given day, a theta trade will have the same uh, delta between a condor and a dragonfly. Excuse me there, I had a frog in my throat. And then so you go ahead and uh, pre-populate that with a cell, quantity of one, the pricing here. It's all set for you and you would go ahead and press that place button. I want to point out too that your targeted return on cash and your targeted annualized return on a dragonfly is usually a little bit less compared to a condor and that's simply because of the different trade structure and you can see that you're actually spending money on buying these much closer to the money calls and puts but that's okay. We don't mind because it uh, can make a big difference during the lifetime of a trade. So let's look at that dragonfly here and let's see what happened. So you placed a dragonfly on the same day, and look at this, with 29, 26, 25, 24 days, it gave you a profit-taking signal. So if you had this trade and you had that automated to generate an order and close that trade out, you'd have had four of the, at least four opportunities there during the day to get out of that trade for a profit. And you compare that to the condor placed on the same day, it never gave you an opportunity to take gains. So that, there's a key difference between the condor and the dragonfly. And that's why we really love the dragonfly. Doesn't mean we don't do condors, but the dragonfly is more robust in certain situations. And let's look at another trade. Here's like another condor. We'll go right to the end to save some time. So look at this one. This condor worked out, but you had to stay in that trade until there were only two days till expiration before you could actually take a profit according to the RTI. Now let's look on the same day, if you had placed a dragonfly, look at this, the dragonfly gave you two profit taking signals with over a month of time left. So instead of sitting in that position all the way till April 29, you could have uh, closed that out maybe on uh, March 28 or 29, the whole month earlier. So once again, that's the advantage of having that close to the money uh, call and closer to the money put that you're long. It changes the whole dynamic of the trade of a condor. It's really a variation. Now let's look at something called a bear hedge. We looked at that briefly in the presentation, but uh, quite simply, it's um, looking here, you can see you would uh, go here and select bearish, bear hedge, and it pre-populates the strikes and everything for you. You can look at the chart. So once again, you're buying this out of the money put spread and you're selling an out of the money call spread to finance the purchase of the put spread. And it's just that simple. And you can see the strikes are all filled out. The pricing here shows negative, which means you're actually getting a credit. We like getting credits. And uh, you could go ahead and buy that and place that order. And that shows up there. Then let me show you what it looks like here sometimes, just looking at a simulation. Never mind the colors on this one. Uh, really, you just want to look at the PL. So you can see here, this trade worked out nicely. Uh, you sold this call spread, you bought a put spread, the market dropped and uh, worked out nicely. And let's look at a bull hedge. Once again, you place this trade here in December 3, and day by day goes along. You can see the P&L turning green, um, getting more and more profitable each day as the market's moving in your favor. So that's how those trades work. And let me show you how to go, do this here with your settings. You go under the My Account, you click Settings, and you activate your Risk Manager by checking that box, Profit Directive, and that's it. Then save it. And that's how you automate the whole thing. Any any short option strategy, you can automate your exit 
and you can have ThetaTrader automatically close it out for you when it reaches your risk or your profit threshold. And then we also have uh, our daily research available within um, ThetaTrader. We have our trade scope newsletter, technical analysis here. That's all proprietary to us. We also have something we call the uh, daily trading summary. So this gives a rundown here of what happened in Asia, what happened in Europe and the US, your technical support zones, economic calendar, any trades that were filled that day, uh, and your pricing, of course. So that's all available there. And then we also have tutorials, video tutorials on ThetaTrader and also educational videos as well. So there's a lot of great stuff here. And now let me go back and I'll show you here how to take a look and track what's happening. So you saw how on the dashboard you can, let me magnify that just a little. I know sometimes it makes it easier if you magnify it. So you can see on the dashboard at a glance, these are all the open short spreads and all the open long spreads. Now, if you want a little more detail, you just go click open positions. You get a full page of all your open positions and you can drill down. Let me squeeze that down just a notch. And it makes it very, very easy and simple to track. You can see everything here accessible. And if you want more information on any particular trade, you just simply hover over it and click and you can get the history on any of your open positions. You can see a graph, what the market's been doing since you've uh, been in that position day by day. This was only here since uh, the 9th, so not too long. And it's just that simple. Now, if you wanna look at your history, you go to your closed positions, And you can filter for any markets or any month or any date range or whatever, but here you can just see they're all listed here um, in the demo account. It gives you a total. Here's 20, 15 out of you know uh, of the 20 were winners. 12 of the 16 or 16 of those were short positions. Uh, four were bought, and it just basically keeps track of everything for you on your closed positions. So that is so simple and so easy and so user-friendly, there's no way any other brokerage <laughs> firm uh, makes this complex option trading that easy. I've been doing this since 1991 and I'll show you in just a minute what brokerage statements still look like when you're trying to trade complex option spreads. It's a nightmare. Then also there's something called Trade Builder. If you wanted to start from scratch and build your own trade, you could pick your market, the contract, your strategy, follow the prompts, but that kind of defeats the whole purpose of ThetaTrader and the algorithm. So that is the demo. And let me show you what I think is probably the best element of all. Let me just switch over here. We kind of saved the best for last. All right, you feel a little bit like that, drink from the fire hose. Just wanted to make sure I got through all the material. You know, we are our time is limited, of course. We want to respect everyone else's time, and I don't want to go on and on because um, we've got some other material to get to. So we can make it even easier, if you can believe that. We know that you have your own thing to do during the day. We don't want you to be a person sitting by the screen like this guy here with 40 monitors. That's uh, that's just not fun. It's a kind of a cliche, and that really, all these commercials you see on TV with, you know, people sitting at their screens and happily day trading themselves to billions of dollars. Um, I'm not so sure about that. So <laughs> anyway, here's the best feature of all with no screen watching. And what am I talking about? It's our trade alert functionality within Theta Trader. Quite literally, one minute trading. So one touch trading with accept or reject. It's that simple. How does it work? Well, these alerts are live, meaning they're integrated with your trading account. So you receive an alert. Typically, if you have some other service of some kind, 
you're going to get an email or a text and you have to log into your platform and try to transpose and copy whatever was in the text or the alert into your platform and build something and blah 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 you don't have to do any of that nonsense with these trade alerts all you do if you like to trade you touch the green accept if you don't like it you touch reject it's just that simple and then from there you saw how the rti can automatically track and manage those positions for you so how does it work and what does it look like here's a short little video you get a text click the link gives an explanation of the trade you get a chart of the trade looks like that's a condor from a few months back and let me point out something here too it's already pre-sized for your account the quantity is already determined tells you what the cash required is what the premium collection is and it's all pre-sized ready to go you don't have to do anything days till expiration targeted annualized return is all noted current quote on the market and it's just that easy if you like it you touch accept and the order then is transmitted and our technology processes the order and places it for you and it's that easy let's look at that again so it doesn't get any easier than that simple and effective so with that said i think you probably like a lot of you really probably like this a lot we get a lot of great feedback on this so here's how to get involved we call it the theta trader elite membership you get everything we just talked about in theta trader all the theta trades with the proprietary algo software simple and effective simple trade tracking you saw how easy it is to follow the trades. And here's what I was talking about. Here's a typical brokerage firm using the same software since I've been in the business. There's no way you can make heads or tails of any of those statements. It's just a mess. So that was a large catalyst behind ThetaTrader is trade tracking. So you have the RTI that automatically will close out those trades for you. So use autopilot, non-emotional trading. That's how you do it there. You activate the risk manager and profit directive. It's that simple. You saw the trade simulator, how much fun that is to use. You can back test. And then the trade builder. So you have the Theta Trades, the RTI, the simulator, and the builder, yearly value of $3,588. And then you add trade alerts into that. Remember, these are integrated with your account. You just accept or reject. It's <clears throat> that easy. All the trade alerts are tailored for your own trading account, pre-sized accordingly. And all you do is touch accept yearly value on those alerts forty four hundred and sixty four dollars in fact i know people are paying even more money for other types of services and alerts and also with the elite membership here's a this is the big thing here folks you get a private coach not just a random person but a licensed experienced trader so you have one hour screen sharing sessions with your private coach and you can have topics like index selection, theta trades, the simulator, diversifying trades, structure, setups, analysis, the alerts, strategies, you name it. Whatever topic you want to cover, we go through some, some routines, but we can customize it any way you want. That's really invaluable to have that co-pilot and a licensed trader value of at least $7,500. I know of educational firms that are charging $25,000 and more just to train you to... Uh, learn how to trade options and that's fine but my point is with theta trader elite that becomes part of what you receive with your membership so remember this is what you get with your theta trader elite a value of over fifteen thousand five hundred dollars and the kind of corny but they always say hey there's more right well remember our proprietary research valued at twenty nine hundred dollars and we have those videos the bonus videos tutorials and education we'll just throw that in there of course yearly value of over $18,000 and that's the elite membership so even at half price oh it's a, that's a one time payment by the way even at half price $9200 it would be a great deal to have access to all of that forever absolutely but here's a one time payment of excuse me 997 one time But we'll do even better than that. The act before Sunday night, we'll take an additional 20% off. Just added incentive because a lot of people, just like I, do the same thing, procrastinate. Think, I love it, I'll get back to it, and you never do. So this will encourage you 
get that discount. And there's no excuse, 30 day guarantee. So if you're thinking, ah, oh, maybe, maybe, you know, you sign up and if you don't like it for whatever reason, that's fine. We're not holding you captive to anything. We'll refund that money, but I think you're gonna love it. So here's what it looks like in the order form. It's a one-time payment, $7.97 for that elite membership. There's the link, cf.altavest.com forward slash TT Elite. Now let me show you something else on how you can get on board for free. You open an account with 50,000 or more, we'll gladly refund that membership. And there's also one other, let's see here. We have a pro membership. So with the pro membership, you can have access to Theta Trader, everything we just talked about and the alerts, but you just don't have all that one-on-one -on -one coaching. So remember the elite membership, you have real, real person, a real advisor. It's not a chat bot, anything like that. But if you like the, the software, you want to use it, that's fine. And we'll gladly have you on board with us. One-time payment. Actually, we, we don't charge anything for that anymore. We used to, and it's free. Altavest.com slash pro TT. I'm sorry, cf.altavest.com slash pro TT. That's how you get signed up for Theta Trader Pro. But quite frankly, a lot of people love having that advisor uh, on their team. But here's something called Bet You Didn't Know. And this is why we like the ES options. They have superior execution and they have a savings of $4 to $15 per contract. So tight spreads, advantages of S&P 500 options, large volume on liquidity, deep liquidity, 630,000 average daily volume in 2019. Now look at this chart. See the green line? So out of all the S&P 500 options, 94% are E-mini S&P 500 options. That's what we trade. That's what we're talking about. So that's the right spot. Largest market share, densely packed strikes, 100 annual expirations, granularity. Advantages, once again, you can track just one or two markets, clear cost structure, efficient margin. Now that some people think, okay, well, what is your cost? And I'll get to that in a second. So remember, E-mini futures options have no hidden cost. These are not securities. They trade at the CME group. There's no payment for order flow. One electronic market, all orders treated equally. Now, what am I talking about with the hidden cost of trading and no payment for order flow? Here's Robinhood making out millions, selling, their, selling, selling out their millennial customers to high frequency traders. They make hundreds of millions of dollars in cash income by selling their customer orders to the high frequency trading meat grinder. High frequency traders are not charities. And they re, the reason they would pay Robinhood tens to hundreds of millions of dollars is that they can exploit the retail customers. So there's no such thing as a free lunch. They're casinos, purveyors of financial opioids. Anyway, uh, it's a little harsh, but I think the point is they say the retail stock brokerages are not charities. They make up lost commission revenue in other ways, obfuscated way down on the guts of their workflow processes where few people notice. So that's the point. There's no free commissions out there. Now remember this, futures and options are tax efficient. If you're trading stock options, you generate 20% return on 100 grand, you get a 12.6% return. You trade options with us, the same result, 14.64% return. That's because of the 60-40 uh, tax treatment. And also you don't have to itemize, you just get one number, what's your P&L, you plug it into your taxes and you're done. FAQs, which spreads to sell, you just basically, we can go into this in more detail, but if you're doing condors, dragonflies, selling options, you just need to ladder those strikes. Can you trade stock options with Theta Trader? Uh, nope, we only trade the E-mini stock index futures options. And can I use Theta Trader and the alerts with my current brokerage? Well, no, it is our proprietary service. What is the performance? Well, Theta Trader is a platform. Everyone makes their own decisions. And reminder, all the performance calculations are net of all trading cost. I didn't point that out, I should have. And our rates are very competitive, competitive, five and a quarter round turn all in. Now you're gonna see other rates on big box brokerage firms. They'll say, oh, we're $2.25. And I just got this off a of site, but that's per side. And then they add clearing and exchange fees and the numbers are actually higher. So our rates are very competitive. And also we have a totally different type of service. We're not just an online only type of thing. These are real people and it's a boutique level of experienced people. Um, 
so here's how much to start trading with. We recommend at least 50,000. And account types, yes, we do have IRA accounts. So if you like what you see, this is how to take action, cf.altavest.com forward slash TT Elite. You can act now and become a client. Here's a summary of all of the Theta Trader benefits, all the pre-built trades, strategies, up, down, sideways markets. Those trade alerts are really killer. Great stuff. Tax efficient. And diversifying into alternatives can help smooth the impact of market volatility, may generate higher returns. So here's one portfolio, another portfolio, and we like number three, some access to alternatives such as what we're doing. Here's a hedge fund manager from AQR. He says a traditional stock and bond portfolio is going to generate 2.4% in the next five to 10 years. So we think he's probably right. And it makes sense to consider something like what we're doing. And here's how to get started. So if you have any other comments or questions, you can always reach out to us. Call us at the number, or you can actually go ahead and email me, um, Eric, E-R-I-K, at altavest.com. And I'd be glad to chat with you and give us a ring. Or just go to the site, pick your service, the Elite or the Pro, and that'll do it. So thanks for having me, and we'll wrap it up. All right, bye-bye. All right, here we go. Take two. David Morgan from TheMorganReport.com. So just go to the website, get on our free newsletter. I also have a couple of paid services. You can go over to the uh, subscribe bar and read about those. So this is uh, Constructing the Digital Money of the Future, and there's more information here at HTTPS, TheMorganReport.com, forward slash load, L-O-D-E, like the mother load. And the first video that will be up on that site will be this one. So... Load, constructing the digital money of the future. This is the world's first digital silver monetary system using a blockchain to enable the creation of tokenized assets representing a unique relationship with investment grade silver. So each AGX is one gram of 999 fine silver. That's what it represents. Can you cash them in? Yes, but it's hard to mail a gram through the mail or go to a facility to exchange it. But once you're at a certain level, like many of these accumulation programs or spending programs, you can cash it out if you desire. So load 1.0 platform and interoperability. Digital silver money system is commercially operational. We uh, use the blockchain, as I said, it's fully insured and audited. Currently there's 567 1,000 ounces of silver vaulted from the first round of funding. We have contributors from over 52 countries, and the load tokens currently issued are 14 million. So when this started, I was initiate. I was one of the first because it was basically a concept at the time. It's been about three years, if I remember correctly. And the only way to get involved initially and for the several months, like two years or more, was through silver alone. You had to contribute, if you choose to do so, obviously, you needed to contribute 100 ounces of fine silver minimum. And that was on what's called the load side of the platform, which means you were taking a risk of this startup, but you also had the ability to reap rewards once it was up and, and functioning. And that meant that there is a spread, like on any silver or gold product, there's a bid-ask spread, just like a stock or an option. Anything in the financial world has a spread. So the spread, some of that goes to pay, you know, utility bills, personnel, that type of thing, developers. And the remaining goes in to purchase more silver. So there's always that spread. Uh, the Load Association is established in uh, Liechtenstein, and it is apparent for all the load assets. I think this is important, and, and I'm not an expert on the blockchain, believe me, but I've learned a lot being involved in this program. And one thing I'd like to say is that this is like the Silicon Valley of the crypto world. Liechtenstein has got the best, in my view, again, I'm a bit biased, uh, legal system and legal representatives or lawyers that will help you through the process. There are other quote unquote precious metals backed cryptos that have fallen by the wayside because they have not 
uh, followed the protocols that are required. Uh, a lot of people think that these things are absolutely free market, no no questions asked, just throw up a website and go to town. That's really not how it works. There is some regulation, and if you're not compliant, you're actually going to find yourself <clears throat> in a sticky situation. So we uh, concluded the beta testing in the second or will conclude it second quarter of this year. And we aim at the first commercial launch later this year, July 2020. I'll just interject that almost all these things seem to always take longer than you would like them to. And those are projections that may be earlier. I doubt that highly. It's probably going to be later, but I'm almost certain by the end of this year, it'll be a fully functional and everyone that's involved will be able to participate on either side or both. So this is a bit cumbersome. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but this is basically the structure. But you can see over here, basically the start, as I said, is in Liechtenstein. That's the center of the hub. And then you have uh, people that are in the United Kingdom that are working in the European sector. You have the token issuer, which comes basically from the, from the center. You have the interfix corporation and this is where you exchange uh as i said earlier basically the spread i'm going to keep it simple from a person that buys an agx token which is one gram of silver so they might buy a hundred dollars worth i don't know how many grams of silver that is today but you get the idea you would have that many agx tokens and then uh the differential is going to go to the bullion engine to buy more silver they're all it's all backed Everything on this thing is backed by silver. Um, and then there's a monet, uh, monetization liquidity platform. That's in work, meaning we will be able to put this on like your debit card so that if you go to any, any retail or anywhere, basically, it's just like having a Visa card, except you're going to be spending your AGX rather than spending fiat. So the assets, this is pretty simple. I tried to kind of make this thing uh, simple. The asset is silver. So the load token, which is represented by this blue one here, that's the load. That was where I put my silver in to start the process, uh, along with many, many others, as you saw in the previous slide, how many people actually contributed silver uh, from 100 ounces to we had people contributing uh, more than a commercial uh, contract, which is 5,000 ounces. Not too many like that. There were some, there's some much, much larger than that. Regardless, so that's the silver load. And then from that is the AGX coins, which again is represented by the orange. And I keep telling you again and again, that's representing, or actually is one uh, gram of silver. So why silver? Historic prominence, durable store of value. Silver is the second most utilized durable commodity in the industrial world with 10,000 applications. And more than that, really. And the only thing that uses, is used more ubiquitously than silver is oil. Oil, not only for gas and diesel, but all the plastics. Just think about the type of plastics that's derived from oil. So I won't belabor the point, but um, oil provides so much to to the world and uh, nothing does as much as oil does, but silver is a second. Uh, affordable, we know that a gram of silver in today's price uh, yields that amount, whoops, sorry. And throughout the ages, silver has been utilized to protect well store value and stabilize commerce. commerce. For 600 years, the silver gold ratio was 10 to 15 to one. And since 1980, uh, it's been distorted Probably before that, I would argue from the crime of 1873, but I don't want to give you monetary history. Right now, the ratio is actually above 100 to 1, so it's really a much better buy than gold. And the ratio has been coming down from the all-time peak of 5,000 years of about 123 down to about 110 last time I checked, which means silver is outperforming gold over the last few weeks, uh, not significantly, but enough to drop the ratio from 123 down to 110. Uh, token is when someone contributes investment grade silver to the program and then load tokens are the uh it's the equity or the silver backing of the whole system the tokens maintain a unique relationship 
with the AGX, we'll call it stable, quote unquote, coin operation. ADX coins are fully backed by silver, as I said several times. Uh, 100% load association owns the AGX platform. So that's like the non distributed ledger, uh, or distributed ledger, I should say, meaning that uh, everybody that's on the platform is a participant. It's one gram. Uh, it's considered the world's first. They may say, well, wait a minute, David, I know of this crypto backed by silver, and there's this other one, and there's this other one. We were the first to start the process. I can pretty much vouch for that. I think it'd be hard to prove absolutely, but we're not the first out there in the marketplace. But there's a difference in my view, but regardless, we're one of the first. I think that will suffice. This gives you an idea of uh, what's going on uh, where there's several ways to use the blockchain. And this is a, a new system, financial system, really, mainly financial. It can be used for other things, obviously. But uh, it's in its infancy. This is like buying Microsoft before people even knew what a personal computer was. I mean, it's, in my view, that kind of situation, the whole crypto world is going to ebb and flow. There'll be some real big winners. There'll be some that fall by the wayside. But this gives you an idea of some of the ideas that are out there in this world. And as I said before, only to gain momentum. So load 2.0, I just went through basically what we did with the platform so far. 2.0, as I said earlier, we're in this beta test right now. So 2.0 is basically up and functioning. We aren't there yet. I projected July. It could be later. As I said, just want to be clear with everyone. And so you can use a MasterCard, Visa, Union Pay. I mean, basically, you can do anything on this with this uh, load AGX coin that you can do with uh, anything in the financial system currently that's backed using a, a debit card. And also, beyond that, you could exchange just your AGX with somebody else. One part that really isn't on here is that if you are a member on the load uh token side, the blue coin, the silver, your silver, if you are a silver contributor, and it's my understanding, I may have this wrong, you can check with the company, you can put up your, um, your shingle for your business. So for an example, I could elect to sell the Morgan Report instead of uh, $500 a year, I could discount it to, let's say, the equivalent of $450 a year if you pay me in silver, that type of thing. And you could do it with almost any inline, online business would be obviously very easy, but you can do real businesses too. You could do, uh, you know, in bigger cities it would work better, obviously, than small towns, but like a big place like L.A. or Vancouver, B.C. or New York, one of those places, I mean, there'd be enough momentum in this where you might be able to offer a discount for your services, whether they're Internet-based or not, and uh, using the, this system. So it's uh, universal, it's not country-centric, it's secure, it doesn't rely on any one network, which is important, it is a unit of account, and you can exchange fiat instantly, and it's audited and transparent. The potential value of the load association in uh, year five, and this is pro forma, forward-looking, I will show you the disclaimer at the end, so this is a projection, no guarantee, but looking out, these people are pretty conservative, maybe not quite as conservative as me, but you can see what the potential is for the system. If you look at what the market value is, Visa and MasterCard, you're looking at 400 billion, 300 billion, American Express, 100 billion, and we would be a itty bitty slice of the pie, but still uh, very, very healthy margins and the ability to grow. So if you are, again, on the... Um, low token sign, a silver contributor, you are going to share in that. Gives you some idea. These aren't sized exactly right, but they're giving you the idea. Uh, you couldn't, if you scaled it correctly, you wouldn't be able to get all these on this display. But you can see where Tether's the big boy on the block, and you can see some of these other ones, um, you know, Bridgecoin, TrueUSD, AAA Reserve. I don't know them all, by the way. And you can see where we're at about 30 million euro. So what are we offering? We are offering a global investment opportunity to participate in the second round of the monetary mass, which again means silver. 
By the way, if you wanted to contribute silver and you don't have any silver, because the least efficient way to do it is to wrap up your, you know, hundred ounce bars and mail them in. And we've done that several times. We've had people, you know, we send them a label and they put it on their box and then FedEx comes out and picks it up. But that's a bit cumbersome. You can just, you know, make a call basically and buy directly from a dealer. Uh, you can buy from your own dealer and just set it up that it gets to the one of the many vaulting facilities that you load uses and you're on your way. So if you're interested, you can probably reach me through the website, support at the morganreport.com, or perhaps even better yet would be to um, call load directly. They have a staff of about 12. I've only got a staff of about five, but regardless, uh, we're here to help. So the first proposal, of course, is the investment I keep talking about, which is the load token. The current valuation, as I said earlier, is about 30 million euro. The guesstimate, forward-looking, disclaimer, disclaimer, is 5 billion. That's one heck of a growth rate. I think everybody knows where cryptos are going. This is probably going to be the most utilized silver-backed crypto on the planet, in my view. But again, I'm involved fairly strongly, and I am biased. Uh, investment two is just go direct and go purchase with fiat the AGX coin, uh, basically buying a gram of silver at a time. Um, and excuse me, I misread this. Scratch that. Proposal two. <clears throat> it's an 80-20 split token ownership of a convertible note. 80% of the investment is secured with the silver bullion. 20% of the investment purchases class B convertible note for a period of three years. And this converts to load tokens at a value of 30 million euro when the load association reaches a value of 150 million. So in other words, words you need a five-fold increase, which is doable. I can't say a lot, but let me just state um, sort of off the record. You're hearing my voice, of course. There have been a few that are rather well-heeled uh, institutional types that are taking a very serious look, and that's about all I can say. Um, so investment two continued. Uh, this increases the silver invested in the load vault, additional users sending and spending the ADX coin on the platform, which is, again, where we get the delta, keeps the whole system functioning. Higher volume of transactions increase the revenues, obviously, just like a Visa or MasterCard, the more transactions, the more that goes to the bottom line. Uh, five times more return on investment on your token on the convertible note when the platform reaches that set goal. So here's the disclaimer. I'm not going to read it to you. Everything I said is uh, taken with a grain of salt. It's all forward-looking. This does exist. It's high risk. It's high reward. And it is something new in the crypto space that has been diligently worked on by some very important uh, minds in the crypto space. And in my view, one of the best jurisdictions that deals with this asset. So again, uh, you can get more information by going to the morganreport.com forward slash load. Uh, you can get on our mailing list and then we will be sending out more information and you can sign up uh, just to get more information from load directly uh, you can go to ag which is a symbol for silver ag dot load l-o-d-e dot coms oh, excuse me dot one o-n-e i'm so used to saying dot com or dot net it's actually ag dot load l-o-d-e dot o-n-e and that does conclude my presentation. I think I have a half an hour, right, Anna? And I will get off so whoever's behind me won't be, I won't be cutting into their time. <laughs>